Welcome back to another drawing video where me and my friend Clyde will talk a little bit about drawing. And this week we're going to talk about how we can take this from the paper, make a photo of it and start coloring it here. And let us return a little bit to furniture sketching and also to traditional furniture sketching because as I said in the intro, I wanted to draw traditionally on paper and then uh, take a photo and draw it, well, color it digitally, but on iPad. Because I think these days most people have not necessarily iPads, but you have some sort of device that can easily uh, take a photo and also you have some uh, drawing apps on it. And especially if you have an iPad, even an older iPad, if you have Procreate on it, Procreate can do a lot of stuff that Photoshop does and also stuff that I usually do with Photoshop and you can very easily do with in uh, Procreate. Uh, before I go into the whole Procreate phase, let me just say what I'm drawing here and why I'm drawing this. So I've been on this um, mid-century modern sort of style, role, whatever you want to call it. I've been really into this mid-century stuff lately and, and just really love this furniture that is sort of, I guess, 50s, 60s would, would, would be mid-century, I guess. I don't know. I just I just love their, their blockiness, their... They have a weight, like you put them down and they sort of have a weight in, in, in the room. And I wanted to, to capture that. And, and I've been drawing mid-century drawings for quite a, a while now, well, mid-century furniture sort of drawings from all sorts of wardrobes and whatnot to armchairs. But I thought, okay, let me, let me combine an armchair with something that uh, maybe has some shelves in it. So an armchair with shelves. Um, and I also halfway through, I realized that it would be a little bit probably better if I also turn on the light because I was, I was drawing midday, but I was drawing in the middle of the room, not close to any of the windows. So there was the, the natural light was not quite enough. Anyways, returning to the furniture. Um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy it. It's, it's sort of a silly idea, I think, but if it works out, I think, I think it might be, uh, might be actually quite cool. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I had quite a bit of fun of this and it's also just the, the traditional industrial design way of sketching where you just take a, a pen and if you make mistakes, you just have to learn with, to, to, to live with them. Uh, I, and I like that sort of uh, drawing. I just, I just, I feel so much more secure if I have a, a whole lot of lines in there and I can just adjust my lines to the previous ones and then just slowly adjusting everything until we have a nice something in perspective. And I think the one that, the, that you can see me draw right now is, is the one that I also decided to draw to color because uh, I, I, think, I think this was the most interesting. So I like the one to the left, basically the, the, if you look at the top um, row, the, the center one from there was interesting, but it was a bit too heavy. Uh, and I think, I think I liked the one on the right that I'm drawing now because it had, it had an interesting combination of, of, of both. And I could see something like this, somebody who thought like, oh, this is super modern and exciting back in the sixties, having something like this in, uh, in their room. Uh, yeah. And I just, after that, I just drew another one just to, just to see if I have any other good ideas in me, but I, I didn't really. I, I didn't like that one at all. I think that that might have been my, my weakest one. Anyways, before I go into coloring, just a, a little reminder, if you guys feel like you want to support me in, in any way, uh, shape or form, I do have a Gumroad uh, video out now as well, where I go through the process and it's, it's a real time video. So a bit over three hours of video process of one of my uh, marker drawings. I enjoy doing it. It's quite fun. And you also obviously get something out of it, but you support me. So now let's simply take a picture and get started. All right. So now that I took the picture, I made a new document, just screen size because the picture is also screen size. I'm just going to do add, insert photo, I'm just going to use the photo that I took and I took several pictures because as you could see, I turned the light on and I think it's going to be much easier to clean this off or clean this up without the light on. So let me turn up a little bit. I think this is just about fine. Let's zoom out a little bit or now. So what I'm doing first is a little bit of uh, adjusting the curves, which means I'm going to push up the brights just a bit more 
and bring on down the shadows just so I have a little bit of that crispness there we go and I say I'm done with this I am also going to duplicate this just in case I always like to duplicate my layers and then I'm gonna go and do a little bit of hue saturation brightness bring up the brightness just a bit more bring down the saturation there were some colors in there that I didn't particularly like okay we can call this let's compare yellow darker brighter what I like doing as well is just duplicate this and put it on multiply which should be where's multiply there it is so as you can see now it darkens everything so that's why I usually bring down the opacity to half or something like that hmm maybe maybe it's not necessarily needed I'll leave that for now anyways this one needs to be on uh, multiply as well because we're going to paint below it at least that's how I I like to work so what we're going to do selection tool everybody knows the selection tool and basically just click it's uh, if you know Photoshop or sketchbook Pro it's uh, the lasso tool the polygonal lasso tool because you can click 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 the good thing is is that you can also draw along with it a little bit so if this one needs to be a bit rounded I can just draw same here just nicely draw along and the rest you can click so it's a really useful little tool that we have here and obviously I clicked somewhere that I can see and it took it in a bad way there we go that's much better and now we just take a color I'm gonna take a random brown and fill it in since uh, lock and oh I don't want to lock actually I wanted to do this just locked the pixels all right uh, since we're doing mid-century modern I this is going to be more in the brownish area of colors for the wood and that might be working uh, let me go a little bit more towards the orange brown there I like this much more okay and then what sort let me maybe push this off is it clearly in view? Yeah, it should be clearly in view. Okay. And since orange is relatively close, orange, since uh, brown is relatively close to orange, something that goes quite well with orange is blue. So I am going to make the, here we go, the cushioning here nice and blue and I don't mind selecting outside of uh, the lines just fill it nicely with the uh, this, this seems nice I'm gonna create a new layer much easier like that there we go and what I can do is use it as a clipping mask so everything that's outside of it will be nicely hidden Oh, here, I didn't select this properly. Should have paid a little bit more attention. There we go. Now, should be nice. I can take a little bit away here. It's a little bit of a finicky work. You want to make sure that it's nice. Okay. So now we have both colors. And from here on, it's basically just a little bit of uh, shading. Um, let me add just another layer and make this red so I can explain I'm gonna set up a light source here oh that's uh that's not a brush I wanted to use let's do sketching so this is going to be the light bulb so this means this is where the light comes from so let's come back here I'm gonna lock this one as well <clears throat> and let's start with the dark wood Actually, if you want to make sure that you, you change it as much as you want, you can just make another one and paint on that one because it's below the blue, so it won't affect the blue. And it is above the brown. So let me just bring down the color a little bit more. I like to give 
my drawing sort of a little bit of a gradient. As you can see, I think that that works quite well. And then I'm also selecting the actual area where I'm working with and I make sure that I go in a little bit stronger with the gradient. I can make it a bit bigger and I can also come a little bit darker with it. Since it's it's wood, I like to keep the the color a little bit warmer. It's also at least what I picked up with these mid-century furniture pieces. And then here, come back a little bit here, and then also click click a little bit around there as well, and just paint in there. And where I know that there's a bit of shadow, I'm going to add just a bit more, but I can bring down the, there we go, the, the thickness of the brush a little bit. And I'm also going to do now the brightness of it. Um, brush, select actually this one, and I'm going to push it a little bit, oh, a little bit more into the yellows, and also obviously brighter. And it is a bit too thin, so let's make it bigger. It's, it's a little bit of trial and error, how much pressure you want to put. I think, I think that looks okay. Later, I will have to probably come back a little bit here and there because the, the lines are a bit dark. Well, they're strong is, is what, what I would say here. I will want to fix it. I don't like that there's a little bit of a white hole there. So let me take this away. Come here. Uh, turn this one off. Pick the right color and unlock it because we can't fill it if, if it's still locked. Oh. So select, click, click, click. There we go. Obviously it's tap, 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 not click, click, click. It's just old ways of saying things. All right. That's, uh, that's good, that's good. So let me just come up here. And I think, the so if we look at it, for my taste at least, the, this gradient here is a bit too strong. So I'm just gonna color pick this again. Make sure that my brush is nice and big. And then just come down a little bit and take away from that gradient and then steal a little bit from here and bring it in here. What I like to do sometimes is just turn it around a little bit, but in this case, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Also, it's too much there, so I'm just gonna, just like that. I like that. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more brightness here on the top of this wardrobe part and brighten this up quite a bit more. Now it's a bit too big. Let's bring it down. There we go. Let's see without. Yeah, I think that is uh, that's working just fine for me. What else I could do here is take a little bit of this and take a different. I usually like sketching with my sketch brush and just make sure to add a couple of highlights just where I know that. Come on, where I know that there will be a bit of jump between the surfaces. So something like that for now is enough. And I'm gonna go over to the blue and this is already locked, that's nice. So I decided to speed up the part of the video where I color in, or not color, but render out the cushion on the chair because it's pretty much the same process as uh, what I did before on uh, the wood, a little bit of light, a little bit of uh, uh, darker shadows uh, according to how I set up the light. One thing that's worth mentioning that you will see a little bit uh, towards the end of the, the, the blue drawing here, here is uh, ambient occlusion. And I mentioned ambient occlusion in previous videos. It's basically where two objects are very close together or something is resting on the ground and the closer one surface is to, the, to, to another, the less light goes there. So, so the darker it's going to become. And then you will see at the end where I, I uh, around here, where I start bringing in some blues uh, and some darker blues uh, where objects are touching or objects are very close to each other and sort of throwing a shadow uh, onto each other. All right, let's continue with the video. What I thought about doing just now is maybe a little bit of uh, reflection. 
because that's always cool. Now the question is, wait, actually the other way around. So first let me come in with this brush, make it just a tiny bit darker. There we go. Uh, yeah, I should lock it off so I don't go out there. So the idea is I'm going to make the area just, oh, because of the ambient occlusion, a bit darker. Just where the sofa area is. Well, not sofa, but armchair. So there's a bit darker because there's less light. But what I can also do is add a little bit of reflection. So I'll make a new layer and just try to follow the line here. And because everything in the wood is brown, we're not going to have color in there, but we're going to have a lighter. Uh, oh, not too big. Keep it sh uh, small. So we should have uh, just a lighter reflection here. I'm going to make sure that the feather is a little soft on this one. I'm going to leave the two or let's, let's keep it the two. I like the two. No brush. So I'm just going to brush this in very gently. But you can make it, uh, you can make your airbrush bigger and then just come in from further away and then take a look. I'm going to step back one because I think I can add more. Yeah, I think I like that. And now the same idea down here. So we sort of have this running there. I'm going to leave a little bit of space between the wood and that. And I'm going to make sure that the feathering is again on two. That's uh, a thing that helps a lot in this case. And I'm going to come in from far. Try not to go too deep in. And let's see. Yeah, I think I like that. I like that quite a bit. All right. Uh, since we're on the wood, I can come one lower. Uh, select a little bit of this dark. And then just play with the same selection tool. Come back to areas that I might have forgotten about. If it's too dark, you can also select from something that's closer to that area that actually makes much more sense. Okay, uh, here that I saw, I, I like jumping back and forth because if you work on something, you'll, you'll see later where it's missing. So we need a little bit of amb ambient inclusion sort of stuff here below as well. I can make my brush a little bit smaller. And just nicely brush it in there. And I can bring in a little bit of brightness wherever there's like... Hmm. Let me try with the sketching brush. So when you have turn in your shapes, you have a brighter spot. Just like here. This should be a much brighter spot. But I feel like this, I will need to do a layer on top of everything. And just make it a bit brighter. And just paint over it. I'll make it a smaller there. There we go. I like that more. Just like that. You can also play along if, if, if you have these section lines, you can just say, okay, I'll just, I'll just follow this section line and do by line where that is. You can do the same for the upper area or the backrest area of the thing as well. And it's just, it's, it's going to make it look a little bit uh, more interesting. Okay, back to the wood. And then from here you can paint in your own textures or you can just say, go to the internet and say wood texture. I want furniture, right? And you say more. Oh no, tools. Oh, I want size made. Oh yeah, images. Images gives me the size. Tools, size, large. So this is pretty cool here. 
reminds me a little bit of that area. So I can just copy this image, paste it in here. There we go. Make sure because here it's under those things, I just go bring it all the way to top. Now, one thing that I like doing is make sure to select an area that you think would be a nice rectangle. I copy paste it, then I can hide this layer, I don't care about this anymore. And now I can, no, let me zoom out before I actually ruin it. Now I'm going to adjust this a little bit. So I'm going to freeform and I'm going to try to create a rectangle out of this. So I'm going to push and pull, not like that. So if you press longer, you can sort of distort this image. And I'm going to say, okay. And if I press it now again, see, it's almost like a good rectangle. I know that this, I have to push a little bit back and up. And let's try it. There we go. This is sort of a rectangle. And I'm just going to create a copy of this. I always like to have a copy of things just in case I can erase this now and hide that one. So this one now I can nicely go uh, into its modes. I'll just take overlay usually works quite nicely. And uniform, make it smaller. Uh, something because I like that uh, color of the wood. I'm going to go to adjustments and hue saturation and just bring down the saturation of that layer because we don't need the color at all. And now just, you can make it a bit smaller. Press long at, on this button. Sorry, free form and then press long on this button and then you can adjust it. Put it there into the correct shape. There we go. I'll just erase the parts that I don't need. Neatly. Clear. There we go. Uh, duplicate this. Always leave one. As I said, that's, that's how I like to work. And from here on, I will speed up the video again because it's basically just repeating the same thing uh, for the texturing. I will have to adjust the layer, well, uh, the, the slab of texture that I'm using over and over again so it fits with the perspective. And this is, this is quite important, but it's also a little bit of tedious and there's no reason for you guys to see that over and over again in uh, real time. But yeah, keep it in mind. That's also why I cut out this rectangular looking shape because it's much easier to manipulate later on when I need to adjust it to any sort of perspective than when you have something that's cut weirdly. Uh, after I'm done with all the texturing, I'm going to adjust the, the blue a little bit on the chair because it was a little bit too poppy. So I just added a little bit, toning it down. And you will see me go over with some highlights above all of the layers. So basically the top layer that I created previously for some of the highlights in the blue, I will just come back and add a couple of highlights in the wood as well. Just having some fun, making everything pop just a little bit more. Uh, and yeah, basically this is this is most of what I wanted to to show to you today. There's there's more stuff obviously that you can do in Procreate, and there's different methods, not just this, but this is the one that I like to use, and I use also the most often. Uh, we might look into other stuff later on, but I do hope you found this useful and you took something uh, away from it, definitely. And if you did, hit that like button, also subscribe. Uh, it, it really helps us if you hit that little bell button so you, you get notifications when these videos come out. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram for more drawing related updates as always. But the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you next week. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.